Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we finish our study in Philippians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9 titled, Think on These Things. This is part 2 of then, 2. Then you read about Lewis and Clark and that Meriwether Lewis prophetic. Meriwether Lewis, he was uh, depressed because he was a deist. <laughs> he had no hope. He didn't come to church on Sunday and sing about the risen Lord. Got on opium, started drinking, and he blew his head off. Yeah. So when you read history, you look at that and you say, in light of God's Word, how do I read history? Meriwether Lewis, nationally, he's a hero. Personally, he's an example. Don't follow Meriwether. You follow Jesus, you follow Paul as he followed Christ. Amen. See, that's what you get with this. But, you know, you can focus then on the reality. What a wonderful thing that expedition was. What a wonderful thing. Yes, there was some bad stuff. Bad stuff in our history. Bad stuff in our country. But you know what? People aren't beating down the door to get out of this country. So when you read history, you read it from the ungodly, they'll make you regret being an American. Yeah. If you read somebody and you read their history and they make you feel ashamed of being an American, burn that stupid book. I mean, if you're in school, get the test done over with first. Get your credit. But forget it. Because anybody who's balanced is going to tell you that we've got some things that went terribly wrong. Yeah. Slavery yes. was one of those things. Horrible. But 600,000 Americans died because we were putting an end to slavery. Amen? So you see how the balance works there? Yeah. And what we did with the Native Americans, bad. But you know what? They did that to the people who were here before them. <laughs> you ever think about that? They want you to be ashamed of the fact that our forefathers fought and took land they did that to the people who were here before them. And they were killing each other. And they were pagan, godless, most of them. And some of them converted immediately when they heard the gospel. Others of them stayed with their pagan perversions. You see how the balance. That's how you have to read everything. And to think on these things should be your main meal. Listen. Take a little brain. Time out just for a second. And think about that. And it, 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 it's not just those of you who study. It's any of you. The amount of time you're listening to that garbage they call music today. Where they're all singing about sex with people they're not married to. And the videos, they got it all hanging out and they're simulating sex and they call it dancing. Yeah. People fill their minds with that stuff and they wonder why they're depressed. Listen. You are a spiritual being. Do you know that? You are flesh and blood, yes. But inside you, the real you, is a spiritual being. And if you fill your mind and your heart with that garbage, it is going to destroy you spiritually. People have criticized me. They said, you know, you, well, I don't hear you preach, stand up there and t you know, preach against this artist or that artist or this actor or that movie. I mean, because number one, I'm not the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you're saved and have the Holy Spirit in you, you know good and well you shouldn't be listening to that crap. Amen. I don't have to stand up here and list off all the people you shouldn't listen to and all the songs that are bad. You got a brain, use it. Yes. Amen. Amen. I was telling uh, Stephen, I think, or Dave, might have been you or David one. Hi, Dave. Say hi to Grandma Doris. They watch faithfully. I love that. We were sitting around Grandma's house, and I mentioned that I had an epiphany after I was saved. I was sitting in the car riding with my dad, and uh, the radio's on, and it's Elton John. Uh, laughing like children, living like lovers. Rolling like thunder under the covers. As bad. I know that I got off there, but 
That's the words. I guess that's why they call it the blues. And Dad turns that thing off. I said, what? It's Elton John. I mean, I, before I got saved, I was into ACDC and Motley Crue. You know, I'm thinking, this? You think that's bad? Because I was thinking of the screaming and the, you know, I thought, he's pretty. Dad said, did you pay attention to the lyrics? That's some queer singing about being under the covers in bed with another queer. Elton John's gay? <laughs> you should have seen my face when they told me Gomer was gay. <laughs> Golly! Shazam! But that was like an epiphany for me. I, find, I suddenly realized... And then I found out, we were talking about this, ACDC mean, doesn't mean electricity. Yeah. It means they go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Boys and girls. Devil, right. Bad stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? And then I listened to the, actually looked and listened to the ACDC lyrics. It was right there. If you as a spiritual being purposely feed your brain on that stuff, just expect what you get. It's going to kill you spiritually. It's going to bring you down. Here, just real quick. Like I said, I don't give you a list of things not to listen to, who not to listen to. You know, I don't have to do that. But I can give you some ideas and the, the positive, the things that are true, just honest. King James Bible reading and study. Most Christians, if they read and studied the Bible the way they ought to, it'd almost take care of the other side of the uh, issue because they wouldn't have time for that garbage. Amen? Amen? Personal ministry, planning it, and execution of that. You should pray about it and think about, this is what I want to do. Amen. I tell people, we've got at least a couple of fellows here that like to teach. But the, the, this isn't the only place we're supposed to teach. And today you can go out and get an assisted living home or a, you have a jail ministry and you can go online and have your own YouTube channel. Whatever. Amen. Teaching ain't my thing. What is your thing? I know there's this couple of ladies who used to just send cards. They would write and send cards of encouragement out to people. Mm -hmm. Other people would make phone calls. They'd just call them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Now if you're going to get in there and gossip, uh, that preacher what's the deal with his beard I mean come on you know if that's what you're going to do don't bother but it, if you're going to call people and say you know I'm just thinking about you and praying about you I just want you to you know is there anything I can pray about anything you need prayer for anything we, you know that kind of thing any number of things plan it pray about it execute it you can read learn history learn biographies there's a great big world out there in the past that you can learn from. Amen. There's biblical music. <laughs> biblical books. Biblical movies. Now some of it, you got to, you know, you're like, it's Christian, but it's not real biblical. You got to be careful with that. Educational material. Family home movies. Photos, letters. Some of you find it a real treat to look at your kids a few years ago or what you were like when you were a kid, you know, and, that, and share it with your kids. Family time. Yeah, people don't even think about this stuff. And you can write your own materials. Brother John writes his own tracks. You can take a, a piece of paper and fold it three times, design your own thing, go down to, zero, down to FedEx Kinko's and make copies, two-sided copies, and hand them out. Amen. Call, write, FaceTime with loved ones who live out of town. And encourage them. Any of those things. Etc. means there's more. <laughs> And he says in verse 8, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise. That's guidelines. In other words, if there's no good reason to listen, read, or watch something, don't. Find things that there is good reason to listen to, read, or watch those things. This is a verse that is good, but again, it's taken out of context. Psalm 101.3 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. 
it shall not cleave to me. And I'll just go with my slides because they explain what, that, what I want us to understand from that. There's a difference between watching or reading an account with violence and watching or reading for the violence. You see the difference there? I can't, I'm not preaching to anybody, I'm just telling you, I can't watch the IFC stuff, bare-fisted, beating the brains in and everything. I just can't watch that stuff. To me, you're watching that, you're watching it for the violence. But boxing, some of you may think I'm crazy, but boxing, the old-fashioned boxing, it was a real sport. And they, they wear padded gloves. I mean, it, in, yeah, I mean, you could take a shot and it can knock you out. Yeah, that's true. But at least there was skill to it, and it wasn't all about blood, and if they started bleeding, they'd stop it. This IFC stuff, it's like bloodlust. But that's, again, that's you, for you to decide between you and the Lord, but there's a difference when you're hungry. It's like people watch NASCAR. Some people just watch it for the wrecks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's a difference between studying the effects of pornography and viewing pornography. That's an obvious, should be, but that's, that's real. If there be any virtue, there be any praise... Think on these things. There is plenty of virtuous, praiseworthy material for believers to think on. And so really it's just left up to you. Are you going to obey? Are you going to do what the Lord has told you to do in His Word? Are you going to take it seriously? That's really the question. And it's a conditional promise. In verse 8, in verse 9 actually, where it says, these things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. It's conditioned. If you want the God of peace walking with you, you have to follow Paul's example. That's what he says in verse 9. I got the wrong number up on the screen, but it's those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in who? That's Paul. Do. So if you follow Paul's example, then you'll enjoy the peace of God. And in previous studies, we've seen and discussed the need to live with our minds and hearts focused on His promises, His sacrifice, His resurrection, the rapture, our new bodies, things to come. <laughs> right there, just a list of things you can think on. That'll take you a lifetime. <laughs> Not to mention our lifelong commitment to preaching the gospel. I mean, if you're not putting forth effort to preach the gospel, you're not putting forth effort to put out some gospel tracts, you're not putting forth any kind of effort like that, then stop expecting anything. I mean, just stop. That's a part of the key to living the Christian life and having the peace of God is for you to declare the gospel. It's just the way it is. Just living life, taking care of our responsibility, doing all of the above should keep us occupied until this life is over. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself and always be depressed. <laughs> You're occupied. As Jesus was telling the story of the noble man, and He said unto them, Occupy till I come. Amen. Was it that, that, some of these things that we were talking about, uh, I think Mark or Doug, one of you is mentioning poor Richard's almanac. Yeah. And how some, preach, some preachers, that's all they use. <laughs> Instead of the Bible. But some of this stuff is true. And when, I think that is where the source was that uh, uh, an empty mind, an empty hands, empty mind is the devil's workshop. An idle mind. Yeah. That's what it's saying. If you just aren't filling your mind with these things, and you're not busy doing what you're told to do in these things, you're just game. Satan's going to get you. Take you down. All right, musicians come forward. Turn to page 234 in our handbook. I just want to say this. Most can't embrace today's biblical lesson because they haven't let go of this world. Most professing Christians who hear, hear the message you heard this morning cannot embrace it because they have not let go of the world. And that's you, that's between you and the Lord. But if you are holding on to this world, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Yes. She turned back to the world. 243. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, 
says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's what it means to let go of the world. It's to embrace the sacrifice of the cross. So we're singing about it. The question is, have you been to the cross? It isn't just going and looking at the cross when you're saved. It's as a Christian embracing the cross and living the crucified life. It's letting go of the world. Every, there's, there's going to be people come to church today and they're going to leave. Uh, they're not even going to give any thought to what Jesus did on the cross to pay for their sin. They're not going to give any thought to the wonderful victory of the empty tomb. And even those who are saved, they're not going to think, you know, in response to what Jesus has done for me, I ought to take up my cross. I ought to put down the world, pick up my cross, and follow Him. And I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, maybe we have to be nude. You ever think about it? What's it going to take for Americans to stop being what they are today? We kind of scoff at the whole idea of North Korea, but... Maybe God's going to let that happen. Maybe we're going to wake up one day, turn on the TV, and New York City is going to be toast. What's it going to take? Maybe an EMP. You're going to knock out all the electronics, your computers, your smartphones, everything gone. Would, would, is that what it's going to take? Would that result in a revival in this country? Might just turn into even more hell. What's it going to take? I don't know. But it's just an amazing thing to sit back and watch what's going on in the church today. To watch what's going on. And there's just nothing seems to move people. Nothing's going to change. People will hear this message. Go right out there today, tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, the next day. Nothing changes. Why? I don't know. I know it's not God's fault. I know it's not God's Word that is failing. I know it's not the Holy Spirit's failing. But if you read Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, you're reading prophets who were ignored. Do you know that? They were ignored. And then God wiped out Israel. I hope that's not where we're at, but I think we are. But you can only take care of you. Today you can lay down the world, pick up the cross, and follow Him. Let's sing about it. 243. Go ahead and lead us. Cross of is a shelter in which we can hide. And it's great the 
cross for sin. Stand and sing on that last if you can. thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We thank you for the balance that we're constantly reminded of in scripture. We thank you for the knowledge that Sunday, every Sunday, we gather together to celebrate our risen Savior. So thankful for the cross, the payment for sin. So thankful for the resurrection and your victory over sin and death. Lord, we just ask that would become so real to us and would empower us to live daily, live the way we ought to live, serving you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
sight for all the children, all the children of the world. Jesus died for all the children.